Hello there everybody, and it is time today for a second Sonic Screwdriver review. After doing my Rubber Tool Replicas 11th and 12th one in Christmas, I went out and I have purchased this. This is a Sonic that's always interested me since it initially was released. Always one I wanted to get my hands on, and now I finally have one. So, without further ado, let's get into the Sonic itself. Okay, so like the Rubber Tool Replica Sonic, we'll start at the bottom and we'll work our way up. Right here down at the bottom we have this black resin end cap that, unlike the Universal Remote, does not have the sort of plastic end piece, as this is a more high quality replica. Um, then we have this aluminium part here, or aluminium for American viewers, which just goes around the bottom here. Not much to talk about on the bottom, as it is just this solid end piece. But um, this black piece can come out if you pull it, I'm not sure if it's meant to do that, but it does. Um, and and difference to note is on the ninth Doctor's prop, this was a lot more sort of aligned and pointed, whereas with the tenth Doctor one, it does, it's a bit more chunkier. Now, moving up to the centre of the Sonic, we have, of course, this lovely heritage gold-coated crackle effect, which, if we were talking about the bulk of tenant Sonics that he used, is not quite accurate to the prop. That's because it was initially painted a shade too yellow, almost. I mean, the original prop was a lot more white. For example, sorry, I've got it handy there, Universal Remote is a lot whiter and a bit more common to the one seen on screen in sort of series 2 and 3 and 4. But um, this one was shunned for that reason, until of course the 50th anniversary came along. 50th anniversary of Doctor Who was the highest rated and viewed episode of Doctor Who in a very, very long time. I don't know if ever, this is just me speaking from memory, so don't hold me to that. But the Sonic Screwdriver was used by the 10th Doctor in that episode, which makes this paint not only screen accurate, it means that the Sonic Screwdriver itself comes from the same production line as the Sonic used in that episode. Of course we have the nice slider emitter which just slide up the Sonic very fluently like so and pressing the button does activate the Sonic screwdriver. We also have this nice blue reading area of sort, I'm not quite sure and um, you can see inside the Sonic there and we have the two grub screws at either side of the Sonic here to open it up and get inside. Another thing to note about the emitter is the ease that it is to press it, you know. Just tapping the button lightly will activate the Sonic. There's not enough, not much pressure needed to be applied at all there. And then we also have these sort of bumps here that have been disputed for a long time over the shape, whether they are teardrops or almost just jagged outcrops at a 90 degree angle. But um, this is what the Millennium Sonic gives us anyway. And we also have, which I forgot to mention before, sorry, this nice gold part which slots into the, well, putting the Sonic back together. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, but um, obviously pulling the Sonic up and down does limit to there. So that of course leads us on to the next part of the Sonic, which is the slider in the middle. Now um, on the prop the slider was a lot more frosted, but that wasn't intentional, so Millennium Effects have tried to recreate what the Doctor would want from the Sonic Screwdriver. We have the nice accurate yellow wires that twist their way up the centre line of the Sonic there. Um, basically what can I say, this is a nice glass piece of the Sonic there. It has an inner tube with the wire inside of it, and what can I say, it's very very impressive. Other Sonic Screwdrivers which I have, for example the Universal Remote, I bring that in once again, have the same sort of thing going on there. And the only one which I can find a sort of fault with with this is the Celestial Toy Store replica, which I'm going to compare in a moment, which mine has sort of cracked and splintered inside of the channel there. But I suppose that's just one of them things which we'll take a closer look at in the comparison. And the top part of the Sonic that we of course have is the aluminium part. We have this nice sort of crystal effect blue emitter there that's very nice and glossy. It is very, very domed, very rounded on the centre here, sorry, moving away there, whereas when you look at, say, the Universal Remote, you'll see it's a lot more, well, a, a, a more rounded dome, essentially, where this is a lot more sort of curved around, if that makes any sense at all. And then, of course, there's a different angle of that there, it's showing the true extent of the darkness of the lens. Because, of course, this is the Millennium FX replica, it has a very similar story to that of the Rubber Tool replica Sonic Screwdriver in the fact that, as it is a prop and sounds are added in post-production and editing, pressing the marvellous emitter switch here simply lights the Sonic up. Sorry, it's very bright, so I don't know if that's shown up properly. But as I say, it's very easy to press. Just a quick tap, lights the Sonic up. 
no 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 sounds obviously as i say because it is a prop replica but for anyone out there who really does think oh my god it should have sound you of course can take it in to the world of tv magic and make it do this there you go happy now of course okay so that is the sonic in itself now reversing what we did with the rubber tool replicas I'm going to show you through what you get with this sonic screwdriver when you get it and then we're going to go on and do the comparison with the other high standard replicas out there such as the two celestial toy store ones that I do own so so the sonic screwdriver itself comes in this sort of white cardboard box which is a bit of a lower standard than the rubber tool replicas wooden box but obviously reflected in the price it is very nice that they have given you this uh, fish and chips box. Anyway, opening the box like this reveals this nice protective sort of foam interior there. And when you look into what you will get, this is what you will find. Sorry, I sounded like a Dalek there. Not much to say here, but inside the fish and chips box is this bag with the sonic screwdriver in. There is this lovely resin stand that, although very simplistic and minimalist, holds the sonic screwdriver marvellously well. Ta-da! You get an Allen key that um, you can release the two grub screws here and here, and there is also one inside the brass section to change the batteries. And of course you get the all-important small certificate of authenticity, which has the 2005-2010 Doctor Who logo on there, my personal favourite. The prop replica and of course the fancy bbc tardis holographic sticker thing then on the back there we have of course the millennium fx replicas by millennium fx view a complete range of licensed props at mfxreplicas.com of which are probably sold out by now i'd imagine but um there's that another thing you get are is this which um isn't fitting on the camera very well but you can see sideways now the millennium fx logo it's a product care thing that when you open has a very very long winded care instructions for replacing the batteries if the paint is damaged if the led doesn't work and the person i bought this off was even kind enough to give me the initial purchase documents with that there so that's all them. Fortunately, that is very top secret stuff and only owners of the product can read that, so sorry. Okay, so now for the juicy part, which is the comparison. Now, before I start this, I understand that throughout the past, there's been a lot of debates, maybe even arguments and competition between Celestial Toy Store Sonic Screwdriver and the Millennium FX Sonic Screwdriver. In this review, I'm going to be completely unbiased and simply review what is in front of my eyes. And as you can see, the Sonic, this one, the Celestial Toy Store one, comes with this nice padded case. The Millennium FX comes with the chip shop box, but what the Celestial Toy Store makes up in, the Millennium FX makes up in elsewhere by providing this nice resin plinth. Now, I think it would have been nice, perhaps, if the Celestial Toy Store had provided this, but at the end of the day, that's just a little thing. Um, bringing them together, bringing them up to the closeness of the camera, you can truly see the difference between CT's and MFX's replica. It's all through the sort of paint, the colour... The dome, the sort of end cap, sorry, the two emitters, um, and of course the fundamental difference that we get is when pressing the emitter on this one, you get the blue light. Sorry, I can't press it properly. You get the blue light, but when pressing the emitter on this one, we of course get blue light and sound. Then opening the emitter on both Sonics, we have the frosted channel, which on mine has cracked. I'm not sure why it did that, but it did that. And um, the Millennium FX one, we have, of course, just see-through. Nice to look at the yellow wire glass tube there. Um, of course, the paint on the Celestial Toys 4 one is probably a more accurate to the Series 3 to 5 Sonic Screwdriver's crackle paint. Um, Celestial Toy Store even went far enough to include these um, sort of dirt grime kind of print things to replicate the Doctor holding the Sonic Screwdriver. And, of course, we have similar things with the end cap and the front. Of course there are very innate details that I could go into but I'll spare you of that. Also to compare with the MFX we have Celestial Toy Store Series 1 and 2 Sonic Screwdriver which at face value is a lot more similar product. We have this similar crackle paint in the sense that it is a more yellower shade than the Ultimate Edition. CT's 
gone with this very, very bold crackle here, which um, looks good more on this side, as it represents more what we've got here with the MFX, but the crackles almost look a bit too bold on this one for the sonic screwdriver. But of course, when this one was released, it was very, very early days. The slider channel inside hasn't cracked on this one, but is representative of the Series 1 and 2 sonic screwdriver being that woven black and red wires as opposed to the 3 and 4 yellow wires. Alright then, and now for just a quick general comparison, let's bring in the other officially licensed sonic screwdriver replica out there. Just for a bit of a size, here is the rubber toe replicas one. Say hello again, you haven't seen it since its last review. But as you can see there, the size difference is very, very apparent, and even more so if we were to extend this sonic screwdriver, and if we were to extend this sonic screwdriver. We can see there that the attention to detail in both prop replicas and the size difference is quite immense. Well, for the most part, that pretty much draws together this uh, review of the sonic screwdriver. There's not much else to say about it in terms of accuracy. Everything seems pretty much perfect for the prop and the standard and the price you would pay for it. Um, the prop itself now is about six years old, I would imagine. This was purchased in 2010 by a man who I was lucky enough to win a bid from, from eBay for this product. Um, the paint being slightly yellow to me adds to the sort of almost the story of the sonic screwdriver and the fact that from the 50th anniversary it became accurate. I love the sort of personality and the vibe that the sonic screwdriver has when on display. I really do like this, the whole sort of standard and the quality of the prop replica, the weight of it is really nice. Everything is just, everything seems to work with the sonic screwdriver, I don't know what it is. Um, for the downside, it will probably be maybe the stand, perhaps, could have been a bit more exciting, like the rubber tool replica one, maybe some Gallifrey in text could have been incorporated there. Um, I am really, really happy with this replica, I really, really like what we got, and um, this is going to take a prime position on my 10th Doctor display on my replica display shelf. So that pretty much brings this review to a close. Thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos on my channel, such as my 11th Doctor review, if you haven't already. And I hope you have a very lovely day. Thanks for watching and goodbye. By the way, did I mention it also travels in time?